All right, my friends, I want to share with you a little bit on bond funds and what you need to understand before you haphazardly buy into one. I, I, this is a big deal, and I think a lot of people make this mistake. Um, they should not, and the, and the industry should be policing this up better, and they don't. Uh, but anyway, so uh, the story is I was talking to a guy today. Sorry about the light. I got some light shine off me. My window is there, and you can see North Georgia. Look at that. Beautiful in the wintertime. It got a little bit warmer today. Tomorrow's going to get cold again. All right, so a guy called me, nice guy, and he just, uh, he's got some cash, his money market account, and he said, hey, what do you think? I'm looking at some bond funds uh, from Vanguard. What do you think? And, you know, I, you know me, I'm not a biggest fan of bonds. So I was like, man, eh, I don't know, I might as well go CDs. You know, I was talking about the Navy Federal CD they could get the other day at 3.75 to 30 months. Um, and so CDs look pretty good. Roughly probably 3% is what you're looking on average for most banks. And that's kind of a pain. You still got to go to the bank and get a certificate. Uh, but he saw some bond funds. He goes, what do you think about these? Now, look, I don't give investment advice. I, I give my opinion. People, I don't manage money, don't want to. Uh, I give my opinion. People do what they want to do. I make no assurances, no guarantees, no nothing. But if someone said, what do you think about this fund? I said, I like it. I don't like it. But here's why I do. Here's why I don't. It's Vanguard. My inclinations, I'll probably like it. But, you know, remember, all funds have risk and uh, and all funds have upside. Um, that's all there is to it. Now, however, if you buy it in 2007, it still had upside, but you got hammered with a risk. If you buy it in 2009, it still had upside and it still had risk and you did fine. It depends on when you buy it. A lot of this is no different than luck. Anyway, so let's dive into this. So don't forget to subscribe, by the way. All right, so this is a Vanguard uh, Intermediate Corporate Bond Fund. This is the Admiral Shares. And uh, and I'm looking at this. I'm like, whoa, a 30-day SEC yield of 4.22. I'm like, that's nuts. Uh, I mean, that's that's significantly higher than what I was expecting. It's like, well, that can't be. Anyway, let's read what the SEC yield, the 30-day SEC yield. Oops. A non-money market fund's SEC yield is based on the formula mandated by the SEC that calculates a fund's hypothetical annualized return as a percentage of its assets. A security's income is based on the current market yield to maturity of the fund over a trailing 30-day period. This hypothetical income will differ at times, at times significantly from the fund's actual experience as a result Income distributions may be higher or lower than the 30-day uh, SEC, the 30-day SEC yield. You can't pay a whole lot of mind to the 30-day. You can, but be careful for buying this fund saying it's 4.22% because there's two things going on here. One is, is the income it pays, the 12-month distribution yield, and the other is its 30-day SEC yield. I will tell you right now, USA, back when I first started there in 2009, one of their bond funds had a 30-day yield of like 10 or 11% for a short-term bond fund. And we were getting calls like you wouldn't believe, like, man, I want that fund. I said, look, the 30-day yield is not re representative at all of the interest that you're going to get, the, the yield. It's not. What happened was... They had this huge distribution in December, the end of the year. And I can't remember what it was for. It's just, it was weird, but it was a one-off, a huge, I think, I can't remember. Maybe it was like 8% or something like that. It was significantly higher than anything else out there. Had a huge distribution at the end of December that juiced up its 30-day SEC yield. Now, USA wasn't doing this nefariously or anything like that. They had to report what their previous 30-day yield was. And it was significantly higher. So I'd be on the horn telling people, don't buy it based on that because that is a one-off. It's irrelevant to the yield that you're going to get. Let's look at the 12-month yield. Previous to that, the 12-month yield, previous to that was like 2% or something. But anyway, I will never forget how many people thought, you know, I didn't know what I was talking about. It was nuts. And anyway, long story short. So when I see a 4.22% distribution yield, 30-day SEC yield, and I'm sitting there thinking, wait a second. That doesn't make sense because if we look at the 10-month bond, the 10-year the treasury, uh, treasury right there, see where it says 2.7? I say, why would the... 30-day intermediate bond for corporate bonds be that much higher than, oops, one, uh, 4.22 minus 2.7 divided by 2.7. Why would it be 53%, 57% higher than the 10-year the treasury? That, that just seems high to me. So I say, I don't know. So then I said, let's look into this. And what we want to do, I'm going to Yahoo. And let's just take a look at the... Uh, 
the historical data, and I'm looking at their dividends. They're using dividends and uh, interest intermingly, uh, intermingly, intermit, uh, intermit, they're combined, commingling, I guess. They're saying this, it's the same thing. Was a distribution it paid out? So we want to look at distributions this guy has paid out, and I want to go monthly here, and we're looking at the last couple of years to see what we're looking at here. All right. So in December 2018, it had a 74% distribution rate. And so if we're looking at the last 30-day uh, yield, we take 7, 7 cents, 7.4 cents per share. And the share price right now is uh, 22.55, 22.55, oops, 7.4 divided by 22.55. And that's a 3.2 distribution yield so that doesn't make sense to me there so let's see what the so i'm like wait a second if that had 7.4 cents per share and right now the shares are 22.55 so now we need to see what the price is so let's go to historic. Oh, there we go historical data that's what i want to see i want to see the price and let's see what the yield has or the prices has been over the last few days if we can get that to cool up i don't want monthly i want daily and let's see what we got. It's 22.55 now. And let's see what it was. Oh, that's, yeah, I want daily. Is it giving us daily? Crack out. There we go. All right, so let's go back to 22.31, 22 point right there. So seven cents per share divided by 22.23. That's still only 3.3% distribution yield. So I guess they're, so I don't know. I don't know where they're getting that from. I don't know where they're getting a 4.22% SEC yield if they only had seven point, oh wait, it was the right fund. Yeah, intermediate term bond, VICSX. So I don't know where they're getting that from. I mean, the fact you look at 7.4 cents on the dollar is what they had. And you you, you uh, divide that 7.4, oops, 0.074 divided by, uh, 22.23, yeah, 3.3. So I don't know where they're getting at, actually. And then here's 6.8 six, uh, 6 cents, 6.8 divided by and we 22.18. I mean, it does, that's 3%. So I, I don't, you see what I'm saying? I don't get where they're getting that yield from. 4.22 as of 122. Where is that coming from? I, I don't know. I don't get it. So what I'm looking at then is I want to say, okay, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. Um, I don't understand that at all. So I'm going to go to summary and uh, we want to go to what it's done over the last 12 months in terms of its yield. All right. So we got to go to summary and there we go. So the yield as of the last 12 months is 3.62. All right. So that's more in uh, line with what I'm thinking. 3.62 with the yield of the last 12 months is probably more in line aligned with this 4.22. I don't get where that 4.22 is coming from. I just don't. Uh, so that may be kind of like, eh. So let's see if we can find distributions on this guy uh, portfolio. Oh, right there. Just, I just had it. Uh, yeah, ah, let's just go back. So we're going to, this is Vanguard's, this is from Vanguard's own site. Now, look, I mean, I they have to, just because I don't get it doesn't mean I'm right and they're wrong. I don't know. I just don't know where that's coming from. So let's go to distributions. It was going to work with me here. All right. There we go. All right. So distributions. NAV. Start to historical prices. I don't want that. So let's go to start date. We're going to go back to go back to last month here. Go back to December. There we go. We'll go to one. Crack how? Does it give me an apply button here someplace? Or what? Yeah. Okay. Oh, three. Okay. So right, let's go here next. I just want to see that distribution. Just give me this distributions or what? No, that's historical prices. Well, where are the distributions at? All right. So that's prices. All right. Realized gains. Oh, here we go. Distributions. Okay. Yeah. See, how is it right there? 7.4 cents per share. Reinvest price 22. I don't get where they're getting that distribution yield. I, I don't understand. 
And so what we can do is we can simply add up all these if we want to. And I don't, but I mean, you know, you could, you could say, okay, 7.4, 6.7. Well, let's just do it real quick. Let's just add all these guys up. We got 7.4, uh, 6.7 plus 7.1 plus 6.6 plus 6.7 plus uh, 6.9, let's just say 6.9, plus 6.4, plus 6.8, plus 6.4, plus 7.3, plus, and that's only, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We need two more months, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need two more months. So let's go down two more months. We need to go back to, yeah, okay, plus 5.8, plus 5.8, plus 6.1. That's 12 months. We got 80 uh, cents of dividend distribution of interest that is paid out and is averaged roughly 23 bucks per share. All right, so we divide roughly, yeah, about 22 maybe. You know, it looks like about 20, 22 and a half, 22.23. Yeah, okay, let's just say 22.5. So we take, all right, so what I'm doing here is I'm adding up all the monthly uh, interest it paid, which is 80, 80, 80 cents and 80.2 cents. And we're going to divide that by a rough estimation of the price per share over the last 12 months, which is 22 and a half. I'm just, that's just ballpark. And that gives us a 3.56, which is exactly what Yahoo said right here, 3.62. So that's right. Where they're getting that 4.22 from, I, man, I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from. Hey, what does that A mean? I, based on holdings yield to maturity for prior 30 days. So I don't know. That's, I mean, I, okay. So they're saying it's not, it's based on the yield to maturity for prior 30 days, but the distribution may be different. Dude, why is it not? Come on, man. All right. All right. Is it percent? Yeah, there you go. Okay, well, whatever. It's killing me. All right. So, what do you make of this? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I just know at the, for the last 12 months, it's paid about 3.6%. Now they're saying it's paying 4.22% going forward, but that's not as a yield. Right, let's I tell you what, let's look at SEC yield here. Now let's go, what is SEC yield? All right, oops. I tell you what, let's just go to Google. All right, you ready? You ready, my friends? What is SEC yield? And let's read this because that's uh that's a big difference, 4.22 between the last 12 months, 3.56. Now they have they have raised rates. I get that, but we're not even anywhere near. The SEC yield is standard yield calculation that allows for a fairer comparison of bond funds. It's based on the most 30-day period covered by the funds filings with the SEC. The yield reflects the dividends and interest earned during the period after the deduction of expenses. That's exactly it. It's, it's reflecting the dividends and interest earned. The SEC yield is used to compare bonds because it captures the effective rate an investor may receive in the future. It's widely considered a good way to compare mutual funds because this yield generally is very consistent from month to month. The resulting yield calculation shows investors what they would have earned in the course of a 12-month period if the fund continuing earning in the same rate for the rest of the year. is mandatory for C. All right, so calculation. And here it is. Interest and dividends received over the last 30-day period. I mean, this, this is bond fund investing 101. So the interest and in dividends received over the last 30 day period. I, I mean, that's, uh, I don't get it because the interest and dividends received, unless they're not paying them all out. I don't know, but if they're not paying them all out. Then how can you say you're getting 4.22 when, look, I'm not here to challenge it. I just don't know. I'm confused by that because it says 4.22. And I said, man, that seemed pretty high to me. And then I'm looking at the last 12 months, wasn't anywhere near 4.22. And even the fact if you take in this last month when the rates have gone up, I'll actually go back a little bit. 
uh, when the rates have gone up 7.4% distribution, well, that's not, I mean, that's the distribution we're getting. That's not anywhere near 4.22. And two months before that, it's still 7.1. So it's not like you have a significantly higher because the feds are raising. I don't get it. So anyway, the point about this is that that is, you got to understand the difference between the, don't just, especially at the beginning of the year, a lot of times in December, there'll be a significantly higher rate uh, a 30 day SEC yield because they, a lot of bonds pay more in December than any other month of the year. Uh, so because they just got to be careful. And I, look, I don't have the answer here. I also know I like it. I mean, this guy's probably going to buy some. I'm a fan of the long term bond or the, the, the bond fund here. So what well, actually I'll show you something else, too, which is pretty interesting to me. What we're talking about with this guy. Um, when it comes to the bond fund. What time is it? Okay, 2.15. Yeah, got to get one of my kids off the bus. All right, so if you look at performance, this is just the Admiral Fund. And so it's not the, um, it's not, it doesn't have that much of a track record relative to other bond funds out there. But if we look at performance, just watch this. It's down 2013, is up the following year. Down 2018, well, actually right here. Uh, you probably want to look at a different fund because um, this doesn't have enough track record. Let's see here. Yeah, eh. Past quarterly returns. Uh, hold on just a second. Ah, all right, here we go. This is what I want. So in this case, down 2013, up big time 2014. And it's not giving me enough track record. Let's go to V um, Vanguard BNDX. Is that the Vanguard Total Bond Index? Vanguard Total Bond. There we go. Total bond index right there. VBMFX. I got to remember that. VBMFX. Let's take a look at this guy. Because what, what I'll show you is if you go back historically, um, VB, is it coming? Is it working? There we go. Uh, the, when it gets, when it loses in value, the following year just is, goes up like a crazy man. Now, I, look, I have no clue if that will happen in the future. No idea. Uh, but here we go to Vanguard 1994, down 266 Following year up 1995. What happened in 1994? The Fed was raising. 1990, in fact, 1994, the Fed raising is what a lot of people say is one of the reasons Congress went to the Republicans for the first time in 40 years. I don't know that to be true, but eh, whatever. In uh, 1999, the Fed was raising. The total bond index was down less than a point, but still the following year is up significantly uh, in 2000. And then uh, here we go, 2013 it was down the following year. It wasn't up significantly. It's going to be hard to be up significantly with a low interest rate. So it'll probably be hard for it to be down significantly too with low interest rates. But anyway, as you can see, whenever there's a down year in the bonds, uh, the following year it comes back strong. Now, I don't know, now last year, total bond index was down to 0.13%, uh, not much. I don't know if it's going to happen again. My insin, insu, insinuation, I bet it probably would. I bet it probably had a pretty good year in 2019. Bond funds across the board. I literally have no idea. Do not quote me on that. That's just my inclination of having studied bond funds, looking back historically, when they go down, they turn around with a good year the following year. And right now, uh, given that we had a bad year last year, the Fed's already said we're going to stop raising. That would indicate to me that it's probably not a bad time to be looking at bond funds. And that's, you know, you know me. I'm not a bad, I'm not a fan, a fan, of, a fan of them. So let's look at their current yield on this guy here. Uh, so remember, 30-day SEC yield, I think, is is a good way to look at it, but you just got to be careful. So, yeah, 2.67. Why is the Vanguard Total Bond Index Yielding so low because 70 to 75% of it is corporate bonds. I'm not corporate, uh, government bonds. Total bond index, a good amount is government bonds. That's why the yields are so low relative to corporate bonds. So just keep that in the back of your mind. That's going to be the yield over the last 12 months. Uh, the 30 day SEC yield. I don't even know if it shows it on here. Uh, I don't know. You have to look at the Vanguard website. Uh, let's see if it shows it here. I didn't see anything for 30 day SEC yield on this guy. And so, uh, five, yeah, it doesn't show it here either. So I'm just curious, uh, 30, let's go to, uh, investments. We're going to go to bonds. Go to US, US fixed income. Go to that's broad market, long-term bond. Broad market, short and immediate one right, right here. Treasury aid will be here. Oop, best and great. It's not best and great corporate. Broad market. Long term bond. No, it's not what we're looking for. We're looking for definitely not short, right? 
Yeah. Where's the total bond index, man? Would it be under intermediate? No. Huh. Total corporate bond. This can't be under bond. Huh. I would think it might be under treasury agency just because it has so much uh, government bonds in there. Huh. I don't know where that guy is. I'm sure I'm missing it. I don't know. That is weird. Am I missing something here? Oh, mutual funds? Still should be under U.S. equity. National. Mm -hmm. Mutual funds. Yeah, right there. Under fixed income. Uh, I don't know. So that's weird. I don't know where that guy would be. Ginny May, inflation protected. I mean, term treasury, long term mortgage back, mortgage back. Treasury. Well, you probably saw me miss this, I imagine. That is weird. Total corporate. Well, let's just look at the total corporate bond. I have no clue. That's going to be a whole lot more than the. Uh, the total bond index because the corporate bonds pay more um, because the total bond index is like I said, 70% government and their 30 day SEC is 3.44. Now they got B there. Why do they got a B? What does that be? Uh, man, you kill me, Vanguard. Holdings yield to maturity dividend. Yeah, see, yield to maturity slash dividend over the dividend for the last. All right. So I don't get it. I don't get why the uh, the difference there between the 30-day SEC yield relative. I, I can't figure it out. Um, obviously, if you have more than just your 10B, TI 10B, you probably could. But just keep that in mind as you're looking at bond funds. I hope this helps. That's what a lot more than anticipated. As always, don't forget to uh, thumbs up, comment questions below share the video and we'll see you guys next time be careful on your bond fund investing might be a good time to do it just watch your backs thanks guys